channel. I am Rachel from Thrive and Truth and I'm so excited that you're here. If you came here from my TikTok video or my YouTube real shorts on the five takeaways from the story of Joseph, you are in the right spot. And let me know in the comments if that's how you found me. Or if you're here because you're used to seeing my planner content and you're a little confused of what's going on, you're still in the right place. I still am going to upload some of my planner content, but I'm also going to be sprinkling in some Bible content as well haven't seen my video on the five takeaways from the story of Joseph, be sure to check that out as well. All right, let's jump right in. You can find the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis starting at chapter 37 to chapter 50. First, let me give you some context. So the story is about Joseph, who is the son of Jacob, sometimes also referred to as Israel because that is the new name that God gave Jacob. So his new name is Israel. And that's where, you know, you hear about the Israelites. It, they come from this family. So Jacob has 12 sons. He's got like, I can't remember, like four or five wives or baby mama's wives. Um, and Joseph is a son of Rachel, who is his favorite wife. And because Rachel was his favorite wife and the original one that he wanted, um, that Joseph is his favorite son. Now, Jacob isn't quiet about this. Everyone knows that Joseph is the favorite son. His brothers all know because he gives them this coat of many colors. I'm sure you've heard of that term, that Joseph with the coat of many colors, um, to signify that he is the favorite son. His brothers already despise him because of this. And one day they're out working in the fields and Joseph tells his brothers that he had a dream that their wheat stalks or something were bowing down to his wheat. Uh, they didn't like that very much. So they're like, you, who do you think you are that we're going to bow down to you? Um, he has another dream about the, like the stars bowing down to his star or something like that. I don't remember the like exactly what it is. So basically everyone's going to be bowing down to Joseph. And he even tells his dad and his dad's like, what is wrong with you? Like, you think me and your mother, like you're going to be above us? Like, first of all, you're the youngest. Uh, no. So they already just don't like him because he's a favorite. And then he starts talking about these dreams, which is my first point that when God gives you a dream, sometimes you need to keep that to yourself. That's for you, not for everybody else. So because he had that dream, they're already mad at him. What, um, let me tell you what happens. One day, his dad, the brothers are off taking care of, I don't know, the sheep or something. And he's like, go find your brothers and then bring me back a report of them. Like be a little snitch. Like no wonder they don't like him. So he goes off and before they see, before he sees them, they see him coming along and they're like, oh, there goes Joseph, the little dreamer. Why don't we just like kill him and see how many dreams he has after we throw him in this cistern and we'll just tell our dad that a uh, animal killed him, carried away. Like, bro, there's no do away with his brother like that, with their brothers like that. Like, come on. Now his brother Reuben's like, no, don't do that guys. We don't need to be doing all that. Y'all are, y'all are too much. But of course they didn't listen to him. Now it's him against all of them. So then Judah's like, you know what? What are we going to get from killing off our brother? We're not going to gain nothing from him. He's just going to be dead and they ain't going to miss him. So why don't we sell him to these Ishmaelites that are passing by now? The Ishmaelites are um, kind of like their distant relatives, actually, because they are from the son Ishmael. That was Abraham's son from the slave Hagar that they sent away. But anyways, that's just going into too much. So anyways, let's just sell them to these people. And then I guess, you know, they'll get gain from that. They'll sell them. They'll get money for it or whatever the heck they exchanged um, for it. Reuben, remember, Reuben didn't want to do anything to him in the first place. So Reuben goes back to the cistern after they threw him in that cistern. And um, he saw that Joseph was gone because they sold him. And he's like, what did y'all do to him? What are we going to say now? What are we going to say happened to him? So they got his coat and they killed a goat and put his blood, the goat's blood on the coat and said, well, we'll just go say that he was killed by an animal, which was the original plan. Now, remember, Joseph had dreams that they were going to bow down to him, that he was going to be, be above them. doesn't really sound like it when he's getting sold into slavery. Okay, so fast forward. Um, Joseph ends up in Egypt and he ends up becoming... Um, a servant to Potiphar, who was like a really high ranking official, whatever. And he becomes like the head of Potiphar's household. Now Potiphar thinks really high of Joseph. So, I mean, he 
gets treated very well. He makes him like second command of his household. I don't know really what that means, but I'm sure it means he manages a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know. It's like being uh, an assistant to the Kardashians or something. I don't know. Um, or I guess the queen of England. That would have been a better... That would have been a better example. Now, because Joseph had great favor with God, Potiphar was benefiting from that favor. So Potiphar's hanging around Joseph because Joseph's all up in his household and everything that Potiphar touches, everything he, do he does is prosperous. So that was my other point that other people will benefit from your favor and your protection just from being around you. Now, keep that in mind when it comes to your kids, the people in your household, the people that you hang around, the people that you're worried about, like your kids are in your household and they may be going off doing what they want to do and not following God um, and the path that he has for him. But because God has favor on you and protection of you and they're under your umbrella, they reap the benefits of that. Okay. So Joseph is super trusted. He's all been Potiphar's household. And one day Potiphar's wife decides that Joseph is looking real fine. The Bible says that he was a handsome man. He was looking like a little snack running around her household. And she wanted a piece of that snack, if you know what I mean. But he refused her many times. And then he even told her like, look, your husband trusts me. Like he's made me the head of how, you know, the head of your household, like second in command only to him. Why would I betray his trust like that? And that says a lot about Joseph's character and why God had such, you know, favor for him. So one day Potiphar's wife, she had enough and she tries to grab him. And when she grabs him, um, he tries to get away from her and she holds on to his robe. Now, this is not the coat of many colors. That's already gone. But he has another robe that he wears that signifies that he's like high in command or whatever. There he goes. There goes another symbolism of him. This robe has a lot of, um, you know, it symbolizes a lot in this story, like the things that Joseph was wearing. It signifies his um, his favor. So she he t she has that. She rips it off of him, basically. And he runs off. And then when she's humiliated... When Potiphar comes home, he's like, look what your little servant tried to do. He tried to assault me. And then when he heard someone coming, he dropped his robe and left. Obviously, Potiphar is so mad. So he gets thrown into prison. Um, this doesn't sound like great favor. This dude is sitting in a dungeon in a foreign land for something that he didn't even do. But look, Joseph is a blessed and highly favored man. And that did not change once he got into prison. So guess what? God gave him great favor with the warden and made Joseph head of all the other prisoners. So first he's head of his brothers, as in his dad has him watching his brothers to see what they're doing. Then he becomes head of Potiphar's um, household. Now he gets thrown in prison, but again, he's got great favor and he becomes head of the prison. Now while he's in prison, there's a cupbearer and a baker that get sent into the prison by the pharaoh. Now they both have dreams and they're so disturbed because they don't know what these dreams mean. And then they ask Joseph if he would interpret them. And he says, well, I can't interpret them, but God can. So he doesn't take credit for that as he shouldn't. And he tells them what their dreams mean. Now, one of them, um, the cupbearer, his dream meant that he was going to be restored back to his position. And he was going to again be the cupbearer for the pharaoh and then the baker his dream and he's going to die in three days so in three days one was going to be restored and one was going to be um and that in fact did happen now joseph told him when you get out of here like remember me like go tell the pharaoh like that um i'm in here and i'm a good dude and all these things so i can get up out of here now two years pass by and they totally forget about it well one's dead okay but the cupbearer completely forgets about him until one day the pharaoh has a dream and he calls all the magicians and all the wise people of egypt and none of them can interpret the dream he has no idea what it means so the cupbearer is like hey i know this dude in prison he told me what my dreams meant maybe he can tell you what your dreams mean so now he remembers joseph so he go they go and get joseph and he tells the pharaoh this is what your dream means so it's all symbolic the dream's all symbolic but joseph tells the pharaoh what your dream means is there's gonna be seven years of prosperity lots of crops all the things and then it's gonna be followed by seven years of famine then 
Joseph tells the Pharaoh, this is what you should do. And he tells them how he should manage it. You need to store all the grain, store all the stuff um, during these seven years of prosperity so that we can prepare for the seven years of famine. And this is how you should do it. And he's like project manager dude and tells them all about it. So then the Pharaoh's like, you know what? Who can manage this? You. I want you to be in charge of all of this. So guess what? Jacob, uh, Jacob, Joseph, again, rises up in a place of leadership he has great favor with the pharaoh and pharaoh puts him over everything so he's elevated to an even higher position than he was before because now he's serving the pharaoh before it was like a pharaoh's somebody else official so he's serving the pharaoh now so just as joseph said what happened there was the seven years of prosperity and then a famine hits and the famine hits not just egypt it hits all over the place so it goes reaches all the way back to where his brothers are Okay, so his brothers are, they're still back there. They've had kids. They're married. Like, he's got a new brother now named Benjamin that he knows nothing about. And the famine starts hitting them. So his dad's like, he tells his brothers, like, what are y'all doing just looking at each other? Go to Egypt and get some food so we won't die. Like, hello. So they're like, okay, fine. So all of the brothers go and they go to Egypt to go ask for or to buy the grain. Okay, so they take silver with them to buy the grain. So all of his brothers minus Benjamin, because Jacob is like, mm -mm, you're not taking my last son because the last time my other son was there, y'all didn't come back with him. Benjamin staying with me. So the other 10 brothers go off to Egypt to purchase this grain. Now, when they get there, Joseph immediately recognizes them, but they don't recognize Joseph. They think he's dead. Okay. And then he's also dressed in this like official Egyptian attire. So of course they're not going to recognize him. Or they think he's a slave. So a slave's not going to be wearing that and handing out food. And what did they do when they saw him? They bowed down to him exactly as God had told Joseph would happen. That didn't happen the way that any of them probably thought it was going to happen. But they did indeed end up bowing down to Joseph. Joseph does not blow his cover and he starts asking them questions like, where are you from? Do you have any other brothers? Where's your father? All these things. And then he starts accusing them of being spies. He's like, y'all are here. Y'all are spies. Y'all are here to come like see where we're weak so you can take our food or whatever. Um, y'all are spies. And they're like, no, 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 no. We just need food. We're not spies. We just came here to buy our food. Like whatever. So he tells them, okay, if you're not a spy, then you are going to bring your brother that you said is back home, Benjamin, because he knew that was his brother that he hadn't met. So he said, you go bring him back and you leave your brother Simeon here in prison. And I'll let Simeon go when you bring your brother, but don't come back here if you don't have your little brother with you. I'm not giving you nothing and this dude's staying in prison. So they're like, fine. So they get their grain. And when they are on their way home, they realize that the silver that they used to purchase this grain was still in their bags. So Joseph made sure that they didn't actually pay for their grain or their food, whatever it was. Um, he put the silver back in their sacks and they were freaked out by like, oh my gosh, we were just accused of being spies. Our brother's in prison. They really gonna put us in prison now because they're going to think that we stole and we weren't trying to steal. Now, when they get back home to their father, Jacob, they tell him the whole story and um, they're like, we can't go back without Benjamin. And their dad's like, mm -mm, nope, you're not, you're not taking Benjamin at all. That's just too bad. He was going to leave his other son in prison, but he was not going to leave Benjamin. He's not, not going to let Benjamin go because of what happened to Joseph. He's like, if you, if my son does not come, come back, you're going to send me to my grave. So they don't immediately go back, but eventually the food that they purchase, it runs out and they have to go back or they're going to starve to death. So they're like, dad, let us take him. And Judah, remember, he was the one that was like, oh, let's just sell him. Judah tells him, look, if anything happens to Benjamin, I will take the fault of all of it. Like I, I will, I will be responsible, like I will do everything to bring him back and you can, you know, blame it all on me, whatever the consequences are. It's all on me if he doesn't come back because all of our families are going to starve. So Jacob agrees and tells them to take double the amount of silver. So the payment that you didn't pay last time, you need to take that. And then the payment for the new food, you need to take payment for that. So they do. They head back to Egypt and when they go back, 
they have Benjamin with them. Jacob sees his brother and he's like taken aback, but he doesn't let them see that. Like he goes and conceals himself while he like weeps or whatever. Um, and he tells them, or he has his official set up like this fancy dinner for them, this feast for them. And they have no idea why. All they know is by this time, you need to come over here for dinner. And they have a dinner with him. Now he still does not um, reveal himself to them. So they are so confused and they are so scared because they think that there's something going on. We're, we're going to jail. And as a matter of fact, they start thinking it's because of what we did to our brother. It's because of what we did to him. We are going to pay for it. Like bad fortune, you know, is following us. Um, we're paying for our sins. Um, cause that's what sin does. It leaves you in these shackles. So they, every corner they turn, they thought we're about to pay for what we did. So at the end of the dinner, um, he's sending them on their way and he has, Joseph has one of his servants put his cup, like his silver cup that he drinks from in Benjamin's sack and he sends them on the way. So they don't know that their, that cup is in Benjamin's sack. Then he has a servant chase off of them and accuses them of stealing it. They're like, he goes up to them and is like, hey, um, this dude just fed y'all. You sat at his table, all these things, and you have the audacity to steal from him. His cup is missing and one of y'all has it. And they start freaking out and they're like, no, 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 we didn't take it. We don't have it. And Judah tells them, listen, if any, if you search all of us and any of them has it, like they're slaves to you. They are your servants. You can have them. Like they will pay the consequences. So he starts, the servant starts um, searching each guy's sack, starting from the oldest to the youngest. So when he gets to Benjamin, he finds the cup in there and they are really freaking out like, oh my gosh. So, you know, the servant tells him, okay, well, that's, that's on him. Like he's about to pay the consequences. He's about to be a slave, um, go to prison, whatever. And Judah is like, no like take me instead. Like I can't go back home without Benjamin. If I go back home without him, it is going to kill my father. Like I will be, I will be your slave. Like I will be your servant. I will serve you. Um, whatever it is, but please let my brother go back home. When Joseph sees this. He can't take it anymore. He tells everyone to leave all the other Egyptians, whatever. He doesn't want to cry in front of them. He doesn't want to have an outburst because Egyptians think they're better than Hebrews. Um, you know, he doesn't want to humiliate himself. So all the other people, all the Egyptians leave and he just starts to weep and he tells them who he is. And he's like, I'm your brother. He tells them not to be afraid because the reason why he's there in Egypt is actually not all their fault. It's something that God had orchestrated so that he could save the lives of many people and he could save their whole family. He tells them to go back, bring their father and bring their entire family down. And so they do, they go back and they tell their father that Joseph is alive and all the things they bring 70 of their family members. They're given this special land by the Pharaoh that they could raise their um, their sheep and stuff on. And they even get put over the Pharaoh's um, livestock and they're raising that. So they're, they end up being very prosperous, multiplying in numbers. And then Jacob eventually dies. And then when Jacob, before Jacob dies, he blesses Joseph's two sons and they become part of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now Judah, after Jacob dies, Judah's freaking out like, cause he's got all this, um, all of this guilt. And he thinks that Joseph now, Joseph's going to pay him back. So he tells Joseph like, please don't harm us. Our dad didn't want you to do that. And Joseph again tells him, you don't have to be afraid. What you intended to harm me, God used for good. So that I can save the lives of many people. Now, this is one of my favorite stories in the Bibles because there's so much that you can get from it. One, um, just because God has a call on your life doesn't mean that you've been sent. So if you're in a position where you feel like God has a calling for you, but you're stuck back over here and you don't see how you're supposed to get from here after God showed you that you're supposed to be here because God told Joseph ahead of time that he was going to be elevated. Um, that just means you haven't been sent yet. And then also before you are sent, before you or sent to wherever you're supposed to be, God will test you first. Joseph went through so much testing of his character and his loyalty to God before God put him in that ultimate position because 
he needed to make sure that Joseph was of good character and his character was going to take him there. Was Joseph going to do the right things when his brothers came down to Egypt and asked for food or was he going to throw them in prison? Because had Joseph not forgiven his brothers, then their entire, there would be no 12 tribes of Israel. They would have died from the famine. It would have changed everything. But God's plan was to save his people because that was his original plan that he promised Abraham that he was going to multiply, you know, his descendants and that he would always take care of them. So God kept that promise. Even though Judah and his brothers did terrible things, God used that for good. Now, if you took something else away from the story, because you can take away like forgiveness. Now, if you took away something else from the story, please let me know in the comments because I love to hear everyone else's perspective and what God speaks to them when they're reading through the Bible because there's so many things that I did not even... Um, there's so many things that I did not even touch on. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and let me know if there's another story that you want to hear next time. Bye.